In the year 1536, a powerful alchemist who had fled from the Inquisition arrived in Mexico. There, he created an invention that was supposed to grant him eternal life. He called it Kronos. 400 years later in 1937, the basement of a building collapsed. Among the victims was a man with a peculiar skin color, resembling marble in the pale moonlight. His chest had been fatally pierced. It was the alchemist. Authorities searched the dead man's apartment, but what they found there was never fully disclosed to the public. After the investigations were completed, the house and its contents were auctioned off. Nowhere in the inventory lists was the Kronos mentioned. Jesus Gris is introduced, an antique dealer who lives with his wife Mercedes and his granddaughter Aurora, who never speaks. One day, he discovers a mysterious gold-colored beetle-like device about the size of a fist hidden inside an old wooden statue. Shortly afterward, Ron Perlman, who is named Angel de la Guardia in the film, visits to purchase the angel statue. He buys it for his terminally ill uncle, who is desperately searching for the Kronos device. He possesses old records from the alchemist and is aware of the power of the apparatus. Unbeknownst to Jesus, he activates the Kronos device, which pricks his hand. He sets the device aside. His wife Mercedes helps him dress the wound and removes a small thorn from his hand. The sting of the Kronos seems to have an attraction for Jesus as he uses it again during the night, allowing it to prick him once more. He appears visibly relieved afterward. The next day, Jesus feels younger and more vital. He decides it's time for a change in appearance. When he arrives at his shop, he finds it in disarray and discovers a business card from Angel de la Guardia. He decides to pay him a visit. Jesus learns about the Kronos device from the terminally ill industrialist Dieter de la Guardia. Dieter had discovered the existence of the golden device through the alchemist's old records. According to these records, the device is, in fact, a type of cage for an insect, and its use involves harnessing the insect's life-prolonging abilities. However, Jesus is not willing to give up the Kronos device and continues to use it. He becomes addicted to its effects as it makes him feel younger and more vital each time he uses it. He hides the Kronos in his granddaughter's stuffed animal. However, this is not the only change Jesus experiences. At a party, he witnesses a man having a nosebleed and suddenly feels a strong desire for his blood. He follows the man to the bathroom and indulges in his craving for blood. While he's in the middle of satisfying this newfound thirst, he is knocked unconscious by Angel. When Jesus regains consciousness, he is subjected to brutal interrogation by Angel de la Guardia. However, Jesus refuses to reveal the whereabouts of the Kronos device. Angel's interrogation becomes so violent that it seems Jesus may die from it. As a result, Angel pushes him in his car off a cliff to make it look like an accident. Angel's uncle is visibly displeased that his nephew failed to obtain the Kronos device. Just as Jesus' presumed corpse is about to be cremated, he miraculously comes back to life, narrowly escaping his own cremation. His resurrection is indeed reminiscent of his namesake, Jesus. When he returns home, he is greeted by his granddaughter. Shortly afterward, Jesus uses the Kronos device again. Because daylight causes him pain, he hides in a box in the attic. Mercedes, Jesus' wife, is unaware of his resurrection and return. He attempts to write her a letter to explain everything that has happened to him, but struggles to find the right words. Jesus heads to the De La Guardia factory. His granddaughter has secretly followed him there. Now, it's the two of them searching for the alchemist's old records. Jesus hopes to find instructions on how to use the Kronos device correctly. Unfortunately, they aren't quiet enough, and Dieter de la Guardia awakens to their presence. Dieter tells Jesus that he won't find the pages because he ate them. However, he gives Jesus a hint. He needs to peel off his old, decaying skin. Jesus wants to know how to stop this decay. Dieter informs him that he needs human blood for that and then he will live forever. But Jesus doesn't want to live forever. He just wants this to stop. Dieter offers him a deal, a way out for Jesus in exchange for the Kronos. Jesus is willing to give him the Kronos, but Dieter attempts to kill Jesus with a stab to the heart. At that moment, Aurora intervenes and strikes Dieter with his own walking stick. As Jesus sees Dieter's lifeless body in a pool of blood, he doesn't hesitate and gives in to his craving for human blood. Shortly after, Angel enters the scene and finds his dead uncle on the floor. His reaction is one of overwhelming joy, as the company will now belong to him. He is jubilant when he is suddenly surprised by Jesus. Jesus and Aurora attempt to escape through the factory's roof. Angel follows them, determined not to let them get away. It's time for the showdown between Angel and Jesus, but it turns out to be quite one-sided. 
Ungel dishes out the blows, and Jesus takes the hits. However, Jesus eventually fights back, and both he and Angel plummet to the ground together, crashing through the factory's glass roof. Aurora comes to her grandfather's aid and activates the Kronos once more, using it to provide him with additional life energy. Jesus rises to his feet again, shedding more of his decaying skin. However, when he notices that Aurora's hand is bleeding from being pricked by the Kronos, he enters a rage and destroys the device. After that, we see Jesus lying in bed, gravely ill. He has completely lost his human skin and has become a pale, ashen creature. His wife and granddaughter say their farewells to Jesus, who, without the life-extending effects of the Kronos, has reached his true end. This was the unconventional vampire classic Kronos from 1992 by cult director Guillermo del Toro, who later gained worldwide fame with films like Hellboy and Pan's Labyrinth. I hope you enjoyed this recap of del Toro's debut work, which opened the doors for his further film career. Subscribe if you'd like to see more high-quality recaps of cult films like this one. I'm sure we'll soon meet again. Until then, please leave suggestions for more recaps in the comments.